हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट आर नेक्स्ट चैप्टर दैट इज रिप्रोडक्शन इन प्लांट्स इन क्लास सिक्स यू हैव रेड अबाउट सर्टेन इंपॉर्टेंट करेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ ऑल लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स मींस देयर वर सर्टेन करेक्टरिस्टिक्स व्हिच वी रेड दैट आर एसेंशियल टू डिस्क्राइब अ पर्टिकुलर ऑर्गेनिज्म एज लिविंग एंड रिप्रोडक्शन इज आल्सो वन अमंग देम Since now we have read about nutrition in animals nutrition in plants we have also read about respiration in plants and animals so we came to know that it is very essential for an organism to survive by using the nutrition process as well as by using the respiration process but reproduction is not essential from that point of view it is essential years after years if the organism with the passage of time will not be able to produce its own kind then after few years we will not be able to see that particular living organism because each living organism is having its own life span that also we have read in our 6th class now before an organism dies because death is also a part of important characteristic so before an organism dies it is very important that it give rise to its new offspring means it will produce its own kind so that its population or its species will be present on earth in some way or the other so this is basically the topic which we are going to discuss in this chapter and for that you must be knowing what is reproduction now as the name of the chapter is reproduction in plants first thing we should be knowing is reproduction reproduction is that process by which an organism is having ability to produce its own kind now reproduction is possible both in plants and animals we are going to discuss about reproduction in plants first one important thing which we have already read in our 6th class is different parts of a flowering plant you must have noticed that there are certain parts present in all the plants whether a plant is giving flowers or no there are certain parts which are every time present and there are not all the plants which are giving flowers some plants are considered as flowering plants some other plants are non flowering so flower is okay if a plant is having flower with the passage of time you will notice that that particular flower will develop into a fruit and that fruit will ultimately produce seed inside it that will give rise to the next generation but apart from that there are certain cases where flowers are not being present on a particular plant so in those cases also reproduction is must so their reproduction occurs by some other method now what are the main parts of a plant first let us discuss about them like you have read that each plant is having stem each plant is having leaves each plant is having roots stem is the part which helps in transportation of materials it also helps in transportation of the food which is produced in the leaves so it is a two way street which we have read in 6th class leaves are essential for the process of photosynthesis and roots are for holding the plant so that it can get water and minerals from the soil now these are actually considered as the vegetative parts of a plant vegetative parts means the parts which are not playing any role in producing the seeds these are the vegetative parts of a plant flower is helpful in production of seeds with the passage of time so it is considered as a reproductive part of a plant now as all plants are not having flowers so all plants are not having the reproductive part so reproduction occurs in those also but that time reproduction occurs with the help of these vegetative parts for example it is mentioned in your book also you notice that during the spring season then there are a lot flowers which are present on a mango plant or on a mango tree and with the passage of time those flowers they get converted into mango fruit inside the mango fruit we have a seed we will eat all the pulp of the fruit and will just throw the seed that seed if sown it will be converted into a new plant 
and after a certain period of time again that plant or tree will start giving flowers so that is possible in case where we will get the seeds but if we are not having flowers only on a particular plant then we will not be able to get seeds so to understand how those plants reproduce because it is also mentioned in your book if you have noticed in the cloud that Pahili was very much worried that she has seen seeds of so many plants, but she has never seen the seeds of sugar cane. She has never seen the seeds of potato or rose. So how these plants are actually growing? So I'll first tell you how all the plants grow. What are the categories of reproduction in plants? There are basically two modes of reproduction. We consider them as modes of reproduction. One is called as asexual and second is considered as sexual mode of reproduction. Now what is the difference between the two? Asexual mode of reproduction is that mode of reproduction in which the reproductive part is playing no role. It means there is no role of flower. There is no role of seed obviously. And sexual is that mode of reproduction in which there is role of flower as well as seed for bringing up the new generation into existence. So one by one we will be discussing about the differences between asexual and sexual reproduction and then in detail we will be learning about different types of asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Here I have drawn the table to help you understand what is the difference between asexual and sexual reproduction. The very first point is one parent is involved. In case of asexual reproduction only single parent is required. With a single parent and its vegetative part, the next generation of spring will be produced. Whereas in case of sexual reproduction, two parents are involved. Means for having the seed production or for getting the next generation, it is essential to have two parents involved. That is considered as the sexual reproduction. Second point I have written is, in case of asexual reproduction, there is no role of reproductive part, which is the reproductive part. Obviously, it is flower. So, there is no role of flower in case of asexual reproduction, whereas there is role of reproductive part, that is flower plays a very important role, rather the main role in case of sexual reproduction. Then, I have written no seed formation because it is not having the reproductive part role. So seed formation obviously will not take place. Whereas in case of sexual reproduction, because of the flower, seed formation will take place and we will get the seeds which will help in the formation of next generation plant. Then I have written offsprings are identical to the plants that are the parent plant. Offspring means the next generation, means the young ones. So offspring in case of the asexual reproduction, these are identical, means they are exactly similar to the parent plant to which they belong. Whereas in case of sexual reproduction, the young ones or offsprings, they may show variations. Variations means they will not be exactly same. There will be some changes in them that will make them different from their parent. One more point which I have not mentioned is that the part which is involved in asexual reproduction generally loses its identity. Means it will not remain as such after the reproduction process. Whereas in case of the sexual reproduction, the plant will have no harm. Plant will remain as such. It will again give, uh, keep on giving the flowers and then those flowers will ultimately turn into fruits and seeds. So there will be no harm to the plant. So these are the main differences between asexual and sexual reproduction which help you in understanding why the reproductive part is important in a plant and why vegetative part is important in a plant. Obviously, vegetative part is present in all the plants, whereas it is not essential that all the plants will have the reproductive part. This is why some plants, they show both asexual and sexual reproduction, whereas there are some other plants which show just asexual reproduction 
or some plants will show just sexual reproduction so hope now it is clear to you what is reproduction what are the two main types of reproduction and how you can differentiate between asexual and sexual reproduction in the next topics we will be reading about asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction in detail